I ask Barbara Stapleton to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the February 2nd, 2017 meeting of the Shawnee County Board of Commissioners. My name is Bob Archer. I currently serve as chair of the commission and represent District 3 alongside Commissioner Shelley Bueller, who represents District 1, and Commissioner Kevin Cook, who represents District 2. Good morning, everybody. First item on the agenda, please. Uh, item 1, proclamations, presentations. Number 1, presentation regarding the act. Work Ready Communities Initiative, Barbara Stapleton, go to Pika. Thank you. This is um, a little bit of information about the ACT Work Ready Communities and the, the process that they have. There's an excellent video that really explains it, I think, in short, and then can allow you to ask any additional questions that I can further field. So I will go ahead and play that. This gives you a map just to show you kind of where there are ACT Work Ready Communities within the state or within the country. Your workforce skills gaps won't close themselves. You need a trusted process for workforce and economic development. A system that tells business and industry that your students, job seekers, and employees are ready to succeed in the workplace. There is an answer. Counties and states across the country are turning to the ACT Work Ready Communities Initiative to enhance their economic development efforts. Powered by the ACT Work Readiness System, the initiative helps ensure that everyone from students just entering the workforce to long-time employees understand the skills employers require and how to prepare themselves for success. <coughs> but where do you begin? ACT uses its assessment and certification expertise to help people in the community build an ecosystem that links education and workforce development aligns the economic development needs of all those involved, and matches individuals to jobs based on skill levels. And the data validates this approach as a sustainable framework. In a survey of county leaders across the country engaged in ACT Work Ready Communities, 73% report improved workforce development partnerships and strategies, and 78% would recommend participation to another county. So where do you start? For counties to become ACT Work Ready Communities, a certain number of people just entering the workforce, workers transitioning to new jobs, and current employees must earn the ACT National Career Readiness Certificate. And a certain number of employers must recognize and accept it. The ACT National Career Readiness Certificate, or ACT and CRC, is based on achievement on three ACT Work Keys assessments. Locating information, reading for information, and applied mathematics. These assessments align to the skills employers deem essential to workplace success for any job in any occupation. More than 10,000 employers nationwide recognize the ACT and CRC in support of their counties becoming ACT work ready communities. The credential gives them confidence in their personnel decisions and it gives workforce professionals valuable predictors of work readiness for those they serve. When counties meet the work ready requirements, they show they have the partnerships to support a robust workforce development program. This helps economic developers attract and maintain business and industry. In fact, since 2012, Site Selection Magazine has used ACT and CRC data to determine its annual ranking of the top 10 most competitive states for economic development success. Once certified, ACT Work Ready Communities have a baseline of information and a stream of real-time data to help them maintain, sustain, and grow their participation in the initiative. Employers also know that personnel decisions are more complicated than assessment and certification alone. ACT Job Profiling helps employers analyze tasks and skill levels for specific jobs and link them to the skills measured by ACT Work Keys enhancing their hiring, training, and advancement decisions. With skills gaps identified, the ACT career curriculum helps individuals close them. 
People can use the curriculum to build career pathways that start in high school and continue to the start of a career and throughout a lifetime. Anchoring these tools and resources is more than 50 years of ACT research into college and career readiness. ACT Research Insights integrate with the framework to help ACT Work Ready Communities leaders power the engine of economic and workforce development. ACT Work Ready Communities see the benefit of aligning everyone to build a skilled workforce that helps drive economic growth. As the economy changes, so do your workforce needs. Isn't it time to find out more? WorkReadyCommunities.org Thank you. <clears throat> so that gives you a brief overview of what the ACT Work Ready Communities is about. What we are looking at, and in, in the state of Kansas as a whole, there are three counties currently that are Work Ready Communities that are certified. We're looking at beginning this process in terms of developing a Work Ready Communities team to align all of those various areas, business and industry, individuals, policymakers, educators, and economic developers to help us grow and continue to develop our talent pipeline within Shawnee County. And so one of the things I've been tasked with is to put that team together. We'd like representation from local government. That's one of the recommendations of recommendations of ACT. And so looking at both having city representation as well as county representation, K through 12 representation, higher education representation, economic development, and <clears throat> several business and industry leaders as well to be able to participate in that in this entire process. The academy itself is a year long. They have four different sessions of the academy. Um, there is there is support to be able to there's only two people from any team that would go in any given time so we'd have a meeting prior for that that team to align together to discuss kind of where we're at what we're looking for from the academy that we'd attend then we'd have a debrief of that team once once the two attendees attended and, and come back and discuss further I know in in more than one conversation both ACT as well as the city has said hey can one of those academies be here and ACT had asked us about that as we are beginning this process to consider participating in this calendar year if you will so he shared most of it I just wanted to kind of clarify some of the um, individual little things but this is what we hear this is what we hear from the employers in terms of the work readiness that they need in, in terms of the, the workforce that they're looking for and this helps support that initiative it also helps support it at all levels in terms of employers local employers um, middle-sized employers struggle even more so than even some of our major employers with work readiness and those, those skills for success Good. I know when uh, Barbara brought this idea to me several weeks ago, I uh, said, you know, that sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I asked uh, if you'd come and make a presentation, and, mm -hmm. and I, I think uh, we're going to be excited about participating uh, in the program. Uh, and, and we'll see. Any questions or comments, Commissioner Buehler? What's your timeline, Barbara, to put together the team and... Working on getting the team put together um, mid to late this month because the, f the first academy does occur in, in the middle of March. I just communicated again this morning with their regional manager just to confirm that everything was on target for that. Um, so we'd want to have everyone um, selected and, and I'm there except for kind of getting these finals from, from city and county. So very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner. Thank you. Barbara, once we become a work-ready community, would this help some people like uh, when we have Payless, who has a change in business, and we have employees that are already certified, they're ready to go, and so we would be able to smoothly transition them over to a different uh, employer in the community? It should, yes, because it gives that validity that they have met those criteria related to location and reading and mathematical skills and, and knowing that they're certified, you know, as a work-ready employee. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's an incredibly I mean, important that we keep employees that have um, high value in our community and not lose them to a different community, whether it's Lawrence, Kansas City, Chicago, or elsewhere. And so keeping our talent pool based here in Topeka. And that workforce development is such a strong part of that. It, it, it sure is. is. It sure hmm. is. Anything else? Again, thank you so much uh, for coming this morning, Barbara. Thank you. It was a very good presentation.
Next item, please. <clears throat> item two, recognition of the Shawnee County Health Department by the Immunized Kansas Coalition for the Improvement of the Human Pap... 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 That's it. <laughs> Vaccination rate. Good morning, Commissioners Allison Alejos, Health Department. I'm happy to be here today to tell you a little bit about um, an award that the health, age, or the health department received. Um, Linda Oaks is going to give a brief presentation about the work that went into this award. But on Friday, I was able to go to the Immunized Kansas Coalition and have lunch there where they recognized us for the work that was done to increase the HPV rates. I'll say HPV instead of human <laughs> papillomavirus. Um, so we were, we were very fortunate to have been selected as someone to receive this award, and we did receive a $5,000 reward for the work we've done. And so the work really belongs to the Clinical Services Division, which Linda is in charge of. So I'm going to let her tell the story of what they did. Okay. Okay, good morning, Commissioners. Linda Oaks from the Health Department. I'm a said agency, too. <laughs> <laughs> Old habits die hard. <clears throat> um, we were uh, privileged to receive an award from the Immunized Kansas Coalition, which is a group of professionals in the state of Kansas um, tasked with improving immunization rates in our state. And this was an adolescent immunization recognition award, and we used the HPV vaccination rate as our project. Um, so just a really quick review, what is HPV? It is the human papillomavirus, and that virus causes certain diseases and cancers. Um, anal cancer and genital warts in both men and women and several other cancers and virtually all cases of <laughs> cervical cancer in women. So for Shawnee County, we looked at the um, first dose. It's a two or three dose series of vaccination depending on the adolescent's age. Um, and we looked at the first dose trying to get them started. In Kansas right now, the rate for the first dose is 50% for girls and 36 for boys, so pretty low. <clears throat> So we looked at our baseline rate of our clients only. So there's about 1,600 adolescents in our practice, and our baseline rate was 74% for the first dose, which isn't really too bad. But we thought we could do better. And so I know you can't read this. It's hard to read, but I did want to show. We used uh, quality improvement tools to do this project. This is our first plan, do, study, act, or PDSA. And this one, we took the vaccine to um, sixth graders in two large school districts here in Shawnee County, 501 and 345. We offered sixth graders um, the Tdap, which is the tetanus shot, which is required for seventh grade, plus we offered the meningitis and the HPV. We were hoping this would be a convenience to parents. It's like, you can get these shots now, you won't have to come in this summer. And so we sent on information <coughs> to parents. Um, we had a pretty low turnout, and I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, there was a lot of paperwork, it takes a lot of staff to go out and do it. Um, and so we were able to vaccinate about 11% of the 345 students and 2.5% of 501. 11% is about what nationwide school clinics look at. That's not too bad. The other was pretty low. And so we felt at that point that even though we were getting some students that we needed to shift our focus. And I'm not going to give up on school clinics just for right now. We mm. left it. So our, we shifted and did another plan to study act. And this one was to um, have uh, two, it was two components, training staff on how to offer the vaccine um, in the past, you know, we've come in and said, well, this is required, Tdap, this one is optional. We stopped saying that. Your child is due for these three shots. And so we did a lot of training on how to talk to parents about the shot and also about talking about cancer. This is a vaccine to prevent cancer, and most people would want that for their child. So that training, plus we offered um, some extended clinic hours um, in September. We always <coughs> offer extended cleaning hours right before school starts. That's our busy time. Parents are busy, and we know that. So we offered extended clinic times at the end of September when parents, especially in USD 501, get the letter that your child is not going to be able to return to school until they have their vaccinations. So we sent a flyer to all the school districts, all the nurses in the county <coughs> with our hours, and we actually saw these, we saw parents walking in with them. So we know they got sent out. And we stayed open during lunch those two days and into the evening um, on Thursday. 
and we saw uh, 49 patients in the age range for this vaccine and gave 33 of them an HPV vaccine. So that's a 67% rate. So that's really, really good. So overall for the project, our rate increased to 88% for that first HPV vaccination. A um, couple of important points I think about this project. Our work group comprised of all staff teams. We had clerical staff, professional staff, management staff. We had staff from another program just to get everybody's input and everybody's ideas. And then the other important thing that I think worked for us is when the first project didn't produce the desired results, we changed gears. So here's a picture of Alice and I receiving the award at the um, meeting last Friday from the Immunized Kansas Coalition, and it's been on social media, and um, there was some news reports about it. And then here's all the staff that were involved with the project. We took this picture yesterday. So um, that's all I have. If you have any questions, can I have any questions? Good work. Thank you. Progress. Yeah. Commissioner Cook. Yes. I mean, I think that it's important to note, as you mm -hmm. said, when the project did not deliver the desired results, you shifted. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think that's the true mark of any sort of a team and trying to find the best solution and not just trying to do things the same way and expect a different result. But good work. Thank you. Thank you. Agility. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank you, Linda. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Mr. Chairman, I think Dr. Pacino would like to oh. say yes, just one word. Absolutely. Come on Thank up. You. I, I won't be long, but I yeah. just want to recognize um, the staff for this excellent work. Uh, I'm actually on the executive board of the coalition that issued this award. So uh, I first approached Linda and I said, you're going to apply, right? And <laughs> she had to think about it. I said, you know what? I wouldn't know what to say. I mean, we just do our job here I mean an award for what and and I think that's pretty typical of certain of the people in the health department I would say probably many government agencies we are just so busy doing our day-to-day -day job that we don't realize that sometimes there is space for excellence in what we are doing and so finally she accepted I didn't have to twist her arm too much but she finally <laughs> accepted and uh, um, the results speak for themselves. I mean, it was a great result. I totally agree with Commissioner Cook. I think, think one of the things that actually impressed the selection committee, and I have to tell you, there was a pretty tight competition uh -huh. to get this award. I had to recuse myself, just for the record, because of my connection to the health department. But one of the things that impressed the committee was the ability of shifting. When they saw that something wasn't working, they didn't keep doing the same thing. They just started to shift gear altogether. And in fact, again, uh, um, Linda talked to me at the time, said, do you think I should just drop it? Should I still keep my application? Because it didn't work. I said, no, you're doing exactly what I think. It didn't work, you're doing something else. So send it in, we'll see what happens. So just congratulations again, excellent job. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Next item, please. Item three, consent agenda. There are five items on the consenta, consent agenda. Uh, any questions or comments? Yeah, I'll move approval. Second. Motion made to approve by Commissioner Bueller, seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item four, new business A, county clerk number one, consider all voucher payments. Mr. Chairman, this morning we have vouchers that total two million nine hundred twenty two thousand five hundred fifty four dollars and forty cents the highlights out of those vouchers are the payment to the jado of six hundred forty nine thousand forty three dollars and sixty five cents we had holding accounts with the state of kansas there was the department of corrections project their payment to rdg for our comprehensive plan Capers payments for our employee retirement, and then the Willis workers' compensation payment. And I have no questions. I would move for approval. Second. Motion made to approve the vouchers by Commissioner Cook and seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item A2, consider correction orders. Move approval. Uh, second, and a uh, motion made to approve the correction orders by Commissioner Bueller, seconded by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item B, County Council number one, consider authorization and execution of contract C36-2017 with TARC, Inc. to provide certain specified social services to residents of Shawnee County with an allocation of $970 
$970,685. Good morning, Commissioners. Jim Crow, Shawnee County Councilor. This contract um, was drafted by Jonathan Brazan, Assistant County Councilor, and, and placed on the agenda. It's a one-year agreement to cover the allocation that this commission made for TARC. It contains all the terms of conditions. It's patterned off of the Vallejo contract, same process and methodology. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have about the contract. If you have other questions about the program, I think we have. There you go. Yeah. Eileen, did you want to? Yeah. Did you want to speak at all? Do you have okay. any questions for Eileen? Do we want to put her on the spot this no. morning? Okay. Commissioner? I don't have any questions. I mean, this is a very, very important program in our community. It is very important. I agree. I'll move approval of the contract. Second. Motion made to approve by Commissioner Bueller. Seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank, thank you. you, Jim, and thank you for being here, Eileen. Good to see you. Next item. Item C, Community Corrections, number one. Consider authorization and execution of contract C-37-2017 with Office of Pride Commercial Cleaning Services for janitorial services at 712 South Kansas Avenue, third floor, at a cost of $450 per month with funding from the Kansas Department of Corrections yearly grant. <coughs> Okay, that was, uh, I'm, good morning, I'm Rebecca Cartmel. Um, the <coughs> explanation there is, is pretty self-explanatory. We've just been unhappy with our current cleaning for quite some time, and so we have decided to switch to this company. They were recommended by the other floors in our uh, office building, so. Okay. Any questions? Just, I'll, just no, this is not state tax dollars, I mean, not county dollars. No. So yeah, this is funded by the state. Grant dollars. Okay. I'll move approval of the contract. Second. Thank you. Motion made to approve the contract okay. by Commissioner Bueller and seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Uh, next item. Please. Item D, appraiser. Number one, consider approval of the request for out state travel for the GIS coordinator to attend an ESRI user conference at a cost of $1,500 from the appraiser's 2017 budget. Morning, Commissioner Steve Bauman, County Appraiser. Uh, this is a request to send our GIS coordinator to San Diego to attend the ESRI user conference. It's a great opportunity for him to be able to network and connect with a bunch of other GIS professionals in a highly technical field that's quickly advancing. Mm -hmm. um, this provides a lot of necessary training that will help keep us up to date on our GIS needs. Be happy to answer any questions. Oh, um, registration for his um, attendance has been waived, so that part's free. Cost, uh, we're estimating with uh, airfare and such to be around $1,500, $1, which is really pretty cheap in total for the, for the training that we're going to receive. And we had the fee waived? We did. It's free to attend the user conference. Excellent. It is excellent. excellent. What, a, what a deal. Uh, the, yeah, this is a very technical, but a very important uh, function in, in Shawnee County. So I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the request. I'll second. Second. I might add a few. Yes, minutes. Commissioner. Uh, I, uh, if anybody has not checked out the appraiser's oh, website, yeah. the section, the interactive maps, um, mm -hmm. I use this in a lot of different public um, mm -hmm meetings um, and to if you go <coughs> to the taxing entities map and it shows you all the different taxing entities in Shawnee County and it's layer upon layer and that department's done an excellent job but it, it's used all the time so I just I and I hope the public gets to be a little more um, friendly with it because there's a lot of information on that absolutely page. we I use that uh -huh. public site quite often just mm -hmm. because it's it's designed so well and it moves so quickly and mm -hmm. and it's good stuff yeah very so. good yeah and there are 50 taxi yes. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, entities in lot. Shawnee County uh, which I learned last night and mm -hmm. we're talking more about it but uh, motion made by Commissioner Archer to approve seconded by Commissioner Cook <coughs> all in favor say aye opposed no motion carries three to zero thank you, thank you Steve next item I don't need public works number one. Consider authorization and execution of contract C38 2012 with Clearspan Fabric Structures International, Inc. 
to design, fabricate, and furnish a salt storage fabric tension <coughs> structure for the District 4 shop located at 135 Northeast 46th Street at a cost of $35,626.95 with funding from the 2017 Public Works budget. Uh, Commissioners Tom Blanc with Public Works and Sal Waste. This is a Public Works <laughs> item, and this is the next step um, in the process to what the Commission had given us prior approval to do, and that was to um, uh, set up a project and use funds um, to construct a salt shed up at our District 4 shop, which is on the Northeast 46th Street, um, and what we call our District 4 area. Um, previously, the Commission gave us approval to go negotiate a contract with Clearspan, which we have done. Uh, the negotiated price uh, is $35,626.95, and that falls within what we expected uh, the cost to be. So it is our recommendation that this uh, contract be approved. And again, the work they will be doing is just the roofing structure. Uh, public Works staff will be uh, placing the asphalt pad and the uh, block, wall, uh, block wall system. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy uh, to try to answer them. Any questions or comments? Move for approval. A second. A uh, motion made by Commissioner Cook <coughs> to approve the contract, seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item E2, <coughs> consider authorization and execution of contract C39 2017 with Cartograph <coughs> for annual maintenance of Cartograph's work direct, director, fleet extension, sign view, and map director arc. GIS software packages at a cost of $16,214.10 with funding from the 2017 Public Works budget and solid waste budgets. Uh, Commissioners Tom Block again, uh, Public Works and Solid Waste. This is a joint item for both departments, um, and this is our annual request to continue on using the uh, Cartograph software modules uh, that we use to manage our fleet, our work orders, our uh, sign inventory. We, we use it extensively every single day by several different people. Um, in, in both departments use it. We, the, re, uh, the split would be 75% to the public works budget and 25% to the solid waste budget because solid waste really only uses this to manage our, our fleet uh, management. Um, and again, this would be a sole source item because we have the cartograph system in place now and of course they would be the only one that can continue on the maintenance. So it is our um, <coughs> belief that this should be approved, and if we have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Any questions? <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve the contract. A second. Motion made by Commissioner Archer to approve. Seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item E3, consider approval of request to solicit bids, waive bidding procedures, and purchase various materials for roads, signs, culverts, snow, and ice for the 2017 <coughs> calendar year and the 2017-18 winter season with funding from the 2017 Public Works Road Maintenance Fund, the 2017 Public Works Ma Bridge Maintenance Fund, the Special Bridge Fund, and the Monmouth or Grove Townships Roadway Funds. Uh, Commissioners Tom Block, once again, Public Works to Sell Waste. Uh, this is a Public Works item. And again, this is our annual request to basically have approval to go out for bids for these items as, they, as the needs arise throughout the year. Um, when we do go out for bids and, and receive them, then they would then come back before the board uh, for final approval. But this essentially just authorizes us to go out for requests for proposals and, and, and obtain bids uh, for these items. So if there's any questions, uh, I'd be happy to try to answer them. I have no questions. I'll move approval. Second. Um, <clears throat> I do have a quick question, Tom. I l was looking at the memorandum, and it talks about <coughs> estimated cost uh, for de-icing salt, $200,000 <coughs> sand, 100000 in calcium chloride. It, don't we have a lot of inventory in those, these items? Do we really expect to spend that much money? Uh, I mean, we've just no, had honestly, such mild winters the past a uh, couple of years. Do, does that deteriorate? Did, I mean, no. I, I, I honestly don't expect probably spend okay. quite that much. Okay. But I put a little bit higher number than what we might expect, um, so I don't have to come back. Okay. Essentially, but but um, this gives us cushion if if we have a really wicked winter season. So okay. so no, I don't expect that much. But there is there is cushion right. in there. But those items they don't deteriorate. 
No, they they're do still not. usable. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, motion made to approve by Commissioner Bueller, seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank Tom. you. Next item, please. Item F, Parks and Recreation, number one, consider authorization <coughs> and execution of contract C40-2017 with Cartograph Systems, Inc., amendment to contract C469-2015 to provide up to 45 additional employees with the ability to access and utilize the OMS <coughs> platform at an annual cost of $12,500, including ESRI licenses with funding from the 2017 budget. Good morning, Commissioner. John Knight, Parks and Recreation. Uh, this is uh, our request to uh, extend the number of people who can have access to the licenses to uh, uh, implement our cartograph system. Josh Lehman has been working really close with Lee Allen and Steve Bauman with the appraiser's office and GIS offices. <coughs> and I know that, that uh, he's also reached out to uh, the public works office as well, too, and talked to some of those people. Uh, be happy to answer any other questions. This will improve our efficiencies instead of writing on a piece of paper, bring it back to our office and putting it in well over time we'll begin to implement uh, allowing staff to implement the work order right there in the field be happy to answer any other questions you may have questions uh, for mr. Knight okay. move for approval. I'll second motion made to approve the contract by Commissioner Cook seconded by Commissioner Bueller all in favor say aye opposed say no Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item F2, consider authorization and execution of contract C41-2017 with the Rocket Science Group LLC DBA MailChimp to complete the MailChimp subscription service as previously approved by the I approved in the legal terms provided online for email and electronic newsletter service with costs not to exceed $2,000 through the end of 2017 <coughs> and funding for the 2017 budget. I want to thank the uh, Candace Recreation and Parkers. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong speech. <laughs> maybe, that, maybe that one's for later today. Let's see here. Uh, commissioners, this is uh, 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 one of our subscriptions. I believe this. Uh, you approved the, the subscriptions, but we ran the uh, terms of the agreement by the counselor's office, and they recommended that this be uh, run in front of you. be happy to answer any other questions you may have. I'll move to approve the contract. Second. Question. Motion made to approve by Commissioner Archer, seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioner. Guy. Next item, please, ma'am. Item G, Health Department, number one, consider approval of request for out of state travel of one staff member to attend the tuberculosis nurse case management training at a cost of $1,750 with funding from the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, Bureau of Disease Control and Prevention. Good morning, Commissioners. Linda Oaks from the Health Department. This training is the training for a TB nurse, and so we would like to send our team leader for this uh, intensive training so that she can better manage and supervise our nurses as we do work with folks with tuberculosis, active disease, as well as um, disease infection. It is uh, completely funded by the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions? Comments? Move approval. I'll second. Motion made to approve the request by Commissioner Cook, seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank, Thank you, you, Linda. Next item, please. Item 5, Administrative Communications. Morning, Betty Greiner, Director of Administrative Services. I'm pleased to announce or introduce this morning our uh, new Human Resources Director, Jeff McMillan. Uh, he, we are very pleased to have him on board, and he bring, brings tremendous experience to this position. Uh, I know he will be a tremendous asset to the county, and I'd like for him to come up and <coughs> say a few words. I am happy to be here, and I really appreciate the warm welcome I've received from everybody so far. Jim and Betty have been tremendous assets already, and I have uh, primarily worked in manufacturing in the private sector for most of my career, but fortunately I've uh, been lucky enough to have served with the United Way Board of Directors and Boy Scouts of America and many veterans organizations, as well as some community partnerships 
uh, the ACT program that the woman spoke on earlier. I worked in Bryan, Texas to uh, bring in some of that. So, But I'm a Midwest boy from uh, St. Joseph, Missouri, who worked in Atchison, Kansas for over a decade. So it's nice to be home, and I, I am eager to work with all of you and welcome input and wishes and desires for what things can be in human resources here at Shawnee County going forward. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you. <laughs> I know Jim is glad. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. <coughs> Commissioners Tom Block, Public Works of Solid Waste. Again, just one more reminder this Saturday is our Saturday collection at the Household Hazardous Waste Facility, uh, where we open from 9 to noon. At located at 131 Northeast 46th Street, again, which is a quarter mile east of the roundabout at 46th and Topeka Boulevard on the south side. And again, it's free uh, collection to all Shawnee County residents of old, old paints, oils, herbicides, batteries, uh, light bulbs, um, things of that nature. So it's one more reminder. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Commissioner John Knight, Parks and Recreation. I just wanted to uh, brief the commissioners. Uh, this past uh, Tuesday night, we had a, a public engagement session at the Cypress Ridge Golf Course. Uh, you'll you'll get a more detailed report as we begin to put some of this together, but I did want to report back to you. We had a full room, and this was a rare public engagement meeting and that I've gone to before uh, in that everybody in the room uh, was supportive of moving ahead with this. And, project and everybody and, and they understood that they were going to have to pay for it and there really wasn't a lot of complaints on that so we'll, we'll see but we also have uh, out there uh, on our website uh, the um, uh, a survey for, for those to participate in um, uh, that weren't able to attend that session uh, so there's we're, the public comment period will continue on for a little while longer but we'll be glad to report back to you and then just to remind you guys the uh, Cypress Ridge Golf Course is in the revolving fund it doesn't use any tax dollars it only uses the user fees so uh, uh, and I think the public understood that as well too so thank you thank you for the report John. Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning, Commissioners. Justin Gregory, Kansas Expo Center. I uh, would like to give, provide you a short recap of our month of February. It's one of our uh, busiest months of the year. This weekend, we welcome the Boat and Outdoor Show. Uh, doors open Friday at 1 o'clock to 8 p.m. that evening, Saturday 10 to 7 p.m., and then Sunday 11 to 4 p.m. Uh, as soon as the Boat Show moves out, the Kansas Garden Show moves in. Uh, followed up by the week after that is the uh, Shrine Circus. Starts on Friday and runs through the weekend. Uh, and then, of course, my personal favorite, the month ends with EcoFest, uh, the three-day uh, <laughs> equine uh, mm -hmm. festival that we've uh, brought to Topeka, Kansas. Uh, so if you see a lot of activity, traffic, uh, congestion around the Expo Center, uh, you now understand why uh, that is. We have uh, four very large shows moving in and out for the next four weeks and uh, welcome anybody to come and enjoy the, especially the boat and outdoor show and the garden show. It's kind of a nice little spring look indoors. Um, and we do appreciate the fact they throw Valentine's Day in there in the middle of it to remind of us that we do have spouses to go home to see our spouses <laughs> that month. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. <laughs> any questions for Thanks, Justin. Justin? Thank you, Justin. Thank you. <clears throat> any other for administrative communications? Commissioner Bueller? I don't have anything. Nothing? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Cook? I have nothing. Oh, well, I, I need to say something then. Uh, <laughs> last night I had the opportunity to attend the planning design workshop at, at Washburn Rural High School. And it was educational. It was good to have community uh, participation there. One of the things that we did was an exercise where we took a map <clears throat> and cut squares of, of residential and, and commercial and industrial and put them all over the map. And uh, it was an interesting uh, exercise and no one would ever let me use the scissors for whatever reason but uh, I, I thought it was very helpful for for members that, that attended um, that's about it other than uh, go Falcons so next item please <clears throat> item six executive session I don't believe there's a need for an executive session today so we are officially adjourned